we are gonna start drawing still life drawings. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose an object. It can be any object, either an actual object or one that you have um, a reference image of on your Chromebook. And on your paper, you're gonna try drawing it out. Now, when you try to draw out still life objects, the idea is to try to make them as realistic looking as possible. And so you wanna make them almost 3D which means incorporating like the rounded portions of it. Um, the other part you need to keep in mind is you wanna make sure that the size is correct so it fits on your paper. And as you draw it, even the bottoms of the object would be rounded because that will make it look three-dimensional. Same with if I have a label or anything else on your object. Now, if you choose objects to draw, and they have lots and lots of detail, you can choose which type of detail you would like to incorporate and which ones you'd like to kind of get rid of. So for example, on this one, I could do, if I didn't want to draw the picture on it, I could do um, school glue. And then I could maybe do the apple down in the corner. Okay, and then you can incorporate other parts of it too if you'd like to. Now, once you have one object, then what you're gonna do is you'll find another object, uh, what I guess whatever you'd like, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna draw a, um, a watercolor set. And if I'm gonna do another picture, um, you have to make sure that you're figuring out where everything's gonna go together. I don't wanna have a whole bunch of objects just right in a row all the way across the paper. You wanna have a lot of variety. So some objects are gonna be bigger, some should be smaller, some will be closer up, some will be at a distance. So maybe what I can do is I can make my watercolor set kind of back here at a distance, and um, this could be my watercolor set. Now keep in mind too, that when you're drawing this, you wanna make sure that if all these objects were sitting on a table, they are all proportionately correct. So obviously my watercolor set's gonna be longer than the glue bottle is, and I can make um, the top of what it looks like. And then I have my colors. Um, the key to making still life look good and make it interesting is that you always have overlapping. So you have parts of it that overlap from behind it. What I could do is I could make this a little bit more 3D so it looks like it's on its side. So it looks like I see the side of it. Now another object I could do is maybe I wanna incorporate just an actual apple. And I could draw an apple, but I want to have it farther down in front. And so I can incorporate my apple, showing it 3D because you can see all the other sides. And then what you'll do is um, you can add in kind of like where you want to have your light source. So if I want to have light coming in from this side, everything on that opposite side is going to be darker and it's going to show a shadow. So if I have light coming this way, this would have a shadow this way and same with the apple. And then the watercolors would have a little bit of one this way and kind of showing over here. Now, for your picture, you need to incorporate seven objects and they need to all be put together in a way that kind of makes sense. So as if you were to put all the objects together on a table um, and then you'd be able to draw them. Now, the other part you need to mention is when you're drawing this, you have to include a table because you don't wanna have just levitating objects. Now, if I made a line just down here for where my object is, it's gonna look like this is kinda of coming off the table. So one of the things you can do is you can actually make a line far back and it would show where the table is. So that would be where my table is. So that way, my objects look like they're sitting on something so that when I shade it, you'll be able to see the difference. Now, I could do other objects in the background if I wanted. I can incorporate a window. Um, I could do other things like that. One of the other things that I could incorporate is maybe I wanna have a pencil leaning up against the apple. And you need to keep in mind again, you gotta use proportions. So how big would the pencil be compared to the apple? And then you wanna add in your details. So like a number two, um, you know, kind of things like that. So it looks like they're actually kind of like balancing on it. So what you need to do is draw seven different objects using proportion and using variety, so some overlapping, some bigger, some smaller. 
Once everything is drawn in on the rough draft, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take watercolor paints and you're just gonna practice using watercolors to fill in the areas. Now, each of the objects should be different colors and there should be more than one color in each. So for my example, which I will have up on the board, if you notice, even my Diet Pepsi, even though the, the can is gray, if you can see it has purple in it and I have different colors, so different sections are different uh, colors and a little bit darker. Same with in uh, a cup of water, my glasses, and then also in the paint wells. So the more variety of color you can add, the more interesting your picture is going to be and the more it's going to look realistic. On this one you notice I don't have any shadows yet because I haven't finished it. So that's the part that I'm going to show you tomorrow so that you'll be able to make it so they look like realistic still life drawings.